This video is a follow-up to my One Way ANOVA on how to actually go forward and run a Bonferroni post hoc comparison for a significant ANOVA. Now, as oh, I'll preface this, I actually told you in that previous video, if it was me, I would actually just download Jamovi and run the analysis that way, but since this is a thing, a tutorial all about Excel, let me just teach you how to do a Bonferroni pairwise comparison using Excel. So when ANOVA told us that we had a significant difference somewhere between these three conditions um, in my study, now I want to know which conditions are significantly different from each other. So what I'm going to do is first let's talk about what Bonferroni pairwise comparisons are. Now one of the issues is that you know the the easy thing would be you know I could just run a t-test between these two then a t-test between these two and then a t-test between these two but there's a pretty big issue that starts to happen there is we use an alpha level of 0 0.05 meaning that you know there's a a five percent likelihood or a five percent chance that I might make a type one error um, given a true null hypothesis in my study and if I run that analysis three times, well, I'm actually artificially inflating the likelihood that I might make a type 1 error in my study, and that's quite bad. So the way that we correct this is if our normal alpha level is equal to 0 0.05, how might I change that based on the fact that I'm now going to make one, compa one comparison between these two, two comparisons between these two and a third comparison between these two. Well, since I'm doing three comparisons, what I'm going to do is instead of having an alpha level of 0 0.05, I'm actually going to take that 0 0.05 divided by three because I'm making three comparisons. And this is exactly what Bonferroni post hoc comparisons does. And so now instead of an alpha level of 0 0.05, I'm actually going to use an alpha level and I'm going to just decrease the, the decimals here um, of 0 0.017. So rather than 0 0.05, I'm going to compare to that. Now I can just run a t-test. So you can watch my video on how to run t-tests, but let me just do that real quick here. I'm going to compare condition 1 to condition 2, then condition 1 to condition 3, and then finally condition 2 to condition 3. So to do this, I'm going to click Data, Data Analysis, and I'm going to scroll down, not an ANOVA this time, but I'm actually going to do a independent samples t-test, assuming unequal variances here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab variable 1 corresponds to condition 1. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that here. Grab all those data. Now I'm going to grab condition two. And you'll notice here, I actually grabbed my label for condition two, and that means that I need to check this box that says labels. I'm hypothesizing that if the null hypothesis is in fact not rejected, that the difference between those would be zero. And I'm going to just specify my output range let's go ahead and specify that I would like that output to be placed right here. And then I hit OK. And what this tells us is it gives us this two-tailed p-value which is 2.45 to the negative 21st meaning that I would move this decimal place and basically this value would be point zero 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 two four five you know wherever however many zeros I need to put in there to get to the negative 21st because I've moved that decimal place 21 places to the left and now what I'm asking is is that p-value that we have right there this 2.45 e to the negative 21 is that less than 0 0.017 well, sure enough, it is. And what this tells us is that condition one is significantly different than condition two. So now I've made that comparison between the affirmation and backlash condition. Well, now I need to do that again. So I'm going to go back to data analysis. I'm going to do a t-test again. 
This time, instead of grabbing condition two, I'm gonna go ahead and grab condition three for the second one. So this one is now comparing condition one to condition three. I'm gonna leave everything else the same, except I'm going to specify a new output range here. And then I'm gonna hit okay. Now this time, this is telling me that my p-value is 5.81 to the negative fifth, or negative five, sorry, so that p-value would actually be 0 0.000581. Well, that is less than 0 0.017, so we would say that condition one, the affirmation condition, is significantly different from condition three and that's what this t-test is telling us. Well finally I need to compare condition 2 to condition 3 so I'm going to go ahead back up to a data analysis I'm gonna run that t-test again and instead of condition 1 I'm going to select condition 2 here. And then I'm gonna leave everything else the same but specify a new output range here so let's just come over here to the side. There's my new output range, and I hit OK. And this one is saying that condition, this is comparing condition two to condition three, and it's saying that my p-value is 2.24 to the negative 12th. So what I'm going to do is, you know, my p-value then is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, two, two, four. So that's my p-value and we know that that is less than this 0 0.017 and so our conclusion here if we look back at our overall omnibus and nova we see that we did find a significant effect of condition such that condition one was significantly different from condition two. Condition one was also significantly different from condition three and condition two was significantly different from condition three. So that's how we probe a one-way ANOVA using Bonferroni pairwise comparisons in Excel. If you have any questions, I am happy to answer them. Please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.